Okay, <laughs> right now you guys are wondering why am I showing you this journal again? Well, I'm actually not. I just have this here to cover up something that I'm going to reveal in a little bit. But today, as the title suggests, I'm going to show you how I created um, this um, hardback journal cover and um, how I built up this spine. This book is chunky and it is quite heavy, um, but it is only a two and a half inch spine. And for those of you who have not seen the flip through, go ahead and check that out because I was really impressed with the way that this journal came out and the cover is um, magnetized and removable. So I'm going to set this to the side. Just bear with me here, I'm trying to work around. I'll um, show you why I have this here also, this particular find. But this is what my um, table is looking like right now. So I didn't want you guys to uh, put this video on and um, this is the first thing that you see. So I, I, I threw you off there a little bit. But when you're doing what we're about to do, you need to throw something down that you do not mind uh, messing up and ruining because that's what I've done. I've also ruined um, my wallpaper um, underneath and that is fine because as you can see, it is just taped. This is a temporary thing. This is the second one that I've shown you because um, I, I was sh probably pretty sure that I didn't want to go with um, the ones that look like this. What I want my table to look like before I actually put it down permanently is something like this. And all this is, is um, from the paper studio. It's only $5.99. If I had caught it on the sale that I just um, caught today, I could have gotten it half, half off. But it's okay. It's fine. But I love um, the ladies that have um, just the wooden paneling um, top. So if I can find something a little bit... I'm looking for something else, but this one is fine if that's all that I can um, come across. So just to show you that. Now, um, first things first. I have three individual pieces of heavyweight chipboard. They are nine by two and a half inches, okay? Now, I have ordered um, some, how do you say that, board binding. And it is, um, what I ordered is the 100 point. And so I can't wait for that to come in because like you can see that I've got three. So um, it's probably a little bit cheaper to go this way. And if, if this is all that you have, or um, Terry has even used, um, Terry uses um, cereal boxes. Um, and by the time that you have built it up with the cereal boxes, um, it's very thick and very sturdy because you guys know that she did that journal for me. So um, I have evidence and proof that cereal boxes can do just as well. But if you do not like cutting things over and over and over and over and having to build them up um, like myself, then go ahead and order the um, board binding. So I, I've kind of jumped and started uh, backwards here. So I'm going to show you guys, this is going to be a series um, in the Let's Create um, series of creating journal covers. I'm going to show you guys how I created the journal covers. And that's one thing that I want to talk about. This first video may be a little bit long, but I want to aim towards like 10 to 15 um, minute videos, no longer than 20 minutes. Um, Cause you know, people's attention span is just not um, all that good. Now, myself, I prefer longer videos, but that's me. Anywho, so um, the Let's Create series. I have to give a public apology right now to, um, oh, goodness gracious. Um, very lovely lady. She's across the pond. I can't think of her name right now, but she has um, a series or something that's called Let's Create. Um, and she came across, it came across my uh, phone and I was like, this woman has stolen this uh, title of my series. And I was really angry, you guys. Silly me, because I then did a search on her channel and she had Let's Create way, way before I did. So I want to apologize um, right now um, to you and I may change mine. I 
Terry helped me come up with a name and I can't remember right now, but it may be let's create something, which I'm not really feeling. But anyway, I just want to say that. And I know sometimes we can't help things, but, you know, at least try to give credit or whatever. And that was just a, a simple accident. But anyway, the next thing I want to talk about is I learned to do these journal covers watching um, quite a few people. Um, my first inspiration was Nick the Booksmith, but after looking um, at the prices for her things, and this is, you know, I cannot... Um, afford to pay that or I don't want to, you know, so I just figured out a way to do this on my own, but she is the original inspiration for the journal covers, um, that I am making. So Terry sent me to a, another lady and I can't pronounce her. She sent me to two ladies and one I cannot, no, <laughs> forgive me guys. She sent me to one lady. Um, I think it's Zoe Tofield. And I came across another lady's channel, uh, Weasel Chick, Chick. And so um, I'm going to list everybody that inspired me to create these journals um, down b below. What I learned from them, um, I'll probably post the video. And one lady on Instagram, you guys, I have to shout her out because she, um, when I kind of got uninspired um, about making these journals, watching her on Instagram, kind of re-blossomed that um, inspiration for me to try and learn and uh, actually do that. So I did that and I'm very pleased. I have been playing around with them and doing some uh, research on my own online into doing these covers. So quite a long story. I hope you guys have not been too bored with that because we're going to create something beautiful. So heavyweight chipboard or your uh, board binding. I'm going to do um, show you this one with um, the heavyweight chipboard. And the first cover that we're going to do, and I'm going to show you how to do the, um, the flat spine. And then I will also show you in a later video how to do the curved spine. I'm also going to show you how to get the raised motifs on your journal covers. So first things first, let's get into this. So... To build this up, all you're going to do, I also have um, this PVA, okay? Um, I ordered it off of eBay. No, not eBay, Amazon. Love that stuff. So, and I think I watched, got that from um, Nick the Books, Booksmith about um, purchasing that. I just have regular Mod Podge, which is what I did the other covers with, um, gluing them together. And so from the lady on Instagram, and I, you know, you have to give credit to these ladies because if they didn't show us some of their tips and stuff, then we would, you know, take a lot longer trying to figure some of this stuff out. So please, everybody, just try and remember to give credit, you know, no matter how small you may think it is. So she was like, you know, she's all about buying in bulk so that you save more. So I purchased this um, gallon of Elmer's glue and I just added it back to my Mod Podge and I need another container, but that's, that's very cheap to um, make more Mod Podge up. I also put my water and this <laughs> raggedy brush because I leave it in the water sometimes so it's all rusted. And that is what I use to um, adhere my covers. And I've had no problems with any of this um, so far. I do feel like the um, Mod Podge probably stiffens it a little bit because, you know, when you use Mod Podge something, uh, to uh, do like your napkins or whatever, it stiffens the fabric. So I think that that helps. So all you do, you're going to spread this. And Terry showed us how to do this in her... her um, video you're just going to spread it all over and I don't want to be too messy here but I don't want an extremely long video either just spread it all over that piece okay so once you've done that take another piece and I'm going to take this one because it had the glue dropped on it and we're going to just glue them together
okay? For time purposes, I'm going to take these pieces, set those to the side because I already have one that I've already glued a while ago and let that dry. So now you have um, your pieces all glued together and that doesn't matter. I don't even know why I keep looking at that. So to build up my spine, when you're, excuse me, cutting your um, journal covers, you get offshoots of different sizes. And so keep those because that's how you build up. Um, you actually call them something else. I can't remember what you call them, um, but you get offshoots. And this is what you're going to use to build up the ridges on your spine. Okay. And for the purpose of purposes of this video because I didn't measure out any um anything like I, I usually do so I'm just gonna look at that take a good pair of scissors and these are um Tim Holtz scissors the scissors the large um the large ones they're very very sturdy and I'm just going to make sure I like to leave a little bit hanging over and I'm just gonna cut that because to build it up to where it's Thick, like on the journal that I showed you, you, you need two pieces, okay? So I'm just going to cut that in half. I'm just going to eyeball that. And I don't know if that one will go in half. So I'm going to go back over here and see. Okay, these two are about the same size. And I want to do... I think I want to do two down here and then a slightly smaller one. Is that smaller? No, that's not smaller. Well, I keep getting the same sizes, you guys. Hold on, bear with me. I should have done this already. And I don't want to go in and cut anything off, but I may have to. No. Let's just work with what we've got, okay? We're gonna work with what we've got. I can't use this piece right now. So I'm gonna take this piece, I'm gonna cut it in half. And then I like to line it up to try and um, eyeball it to see if that's what I want. Now you can leave it like that and just have um, the top blank, but I'm gonna see if I want to add something up there. And now my other journals, I went in, I left a, a, a space here, um, a good enough space because I um, went and added in a motif. If I'm, I'm not even sure if that's the correct way to say that, but I added in a motif here. So let's see. Take that away. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think we'll just do the one. So now all I'm going to do is, if I had a curved spine, I would curve this around it and then glue it. But to help it adhere some, I like to take, um, just take a file, a file you know an emery board and just kind of rough that up a little bit now I was using just some regular old tacky glue to glue that part on so this part you guys are going to have to bear with me to get the idea of it and then I will probably and I'm gonna have it about right there then I'm gonna look just eyeball everything you guys these are handmade journals now um, what I was doing is taking a piece because you guys I, you know I do not like to pull out a ruler and measure anything so you can take a piece of paper but what I did was I took um, this lightweight chipboard and then where that was and then I marked so now I have a template of how far 
everything needs to be lined up. So just say it came, it was up this high. I'm just going to pull it down and then line that up, okay? So that's what we're going to have. Come in, glue another piece on top of that. I guess I can. And I am at an odd angle, so I hope everything is um, laying out right for you guys. And I cannot see my time. Okay, I think I'm at five minutes. So I just lay that on top of that one. And make sure that you line that up really nice. And that it's um, stuck down. Any extra glue you need to wipe off because if you have big globs of glue, when you go to put your um, fabric over that, it can have lumps in it. And line it back up because once you're moving that, it's going to move when you're trying to get rid of that glue. Not too precise, but right there. Now I'll go with the next one. Set it down, then I'll pick it up and see if that's lined up. And I've thought things were lined up and then gone back in and they were not as aligned, but these are handmade keepsake journals. I have to reiterate that. So they're not going to be perfect. But I think these imperfections make the journals more beautiful. I'm going to lay that one down over that. Make sure that it's lined up. Press it down. Now, I didn't tell you that. When you do your, um, when you're gluing your pieces together, if you have multiple pieces to glue together, just um, set them on a flat surface and stack um, a lot of heavy books or something heavy um, on the top of it. And I see here that I actually have two si different size pieces. You guys, the first time this has happened, but I'm not gonna worry and stress over that because I think it will still be okay. It should be, no problems. And I may create something that's actually, you know, very nice. You just have to uh, go with the flow with this stuff. If you stress out over this stuff too much, it will no longer be fun and relaxing. And that's what crafting is. It's, it's something that's fun and it helps to relax you. So I think I did decide to just go with two smaller pieces up top. So that's what I'm going to do. I want it about right there and I can tell that that's very crooked now I usually have lots of offshoots and I know yeah there's one it's all crudded up and I take and I just scrape like so And every time you press down, if you clunked on the glue as I have, you're going to have excess glue. Okay. Look at it once again to make sure that it's straight. And it looks a little off to me. 
and you still have a little bit of time to work with that, but not very much, you guys. That glue sets really fast, especially when you rough it up with the um, emery board. And this um, paper towel is a little bit damp, so it's not sticking. Okay, we're gonna attach our last piece. Now, as I'm doing this, I want to um, please you guys go over, um, or look down in the description box and check out the other ladies that have been so kind and generous to share their craft. Um, I'm going to take this time also to say that I'm so um, happy that Crafty Irina has rejoined us, you guys. I don't think that she ever really left us. Um, and I was thinking about her because she has given so much to this community. Um, she's just a sweet lady. And she was one of the um, first few people that um, helped me out and inspired me um, in this junk journal world. So thank you, Crafty Irene, for that. Oh, Irene, I should get, just say. Okay, so now we have this. I have clips somewhere some waves around here that um, I use and I have some long ones but just clip each end well, that won't come out clip it clip clip each end down and hold it these are already really stuck, so um, that's not necessary. But when you work on the curved journals, um, you need to clip them down. But we'll get there when we get there. And I need to go and um, I have a couple of huge ones around here somewhere. But I need to go and buy some more clips and find, I'll probably end up having to buy more of the um, long um, clip things you can get those at the Dollar Tree yeah cuz see that's really not gonna catch that maybe if I use this one there I can come around and that'll grab well it helps a little bit so what I do now is I'm gonna set that aside and just let it dry and that doesn't take very long it's gonna dry really fast so this is about to conclude this journal um, series number one or whatever I'm going to call it. So I want to show you about covers. Now, if you have your covers um, <clears throat> already together, um, ready to go, I got this fabric at Goodwill. <clears throat> so especially since you're playing around and I have other fabric that I've used, I bought a ton of fabric, you guys. Um, I don't even want to start pulling it out, but I'm sure we all have a ton of fabric. And it seems like every time I even go to Walmart, I'm over there in that section buying more and more fabric. But this came from the Goodwill and I paid five, I paid five bucks for it, $4.99. And some of those rolls at Walmart are like six, seven, eight bucks for, um, one yard. I don't even know how many yards this is, you guys. Probably five, six, seven yards. And it's good, thick quality. It's just a curtain. But I like this because, one, of the color. And then, two, because of, um, I don't know what you're going to call this, all the little filigree scrolls on that. But it's a little bit raised. So um, I'll just use that for a journal cover. Now, I also... At Savers in um, Austin, I got a lot of this, um, it's 100% cotton fabric. Now, it does have the lines in it, lines down through there, but that hasn't bothered me, and I like the way um, some of the um, added interest it brings to the journal covers. So, at this point, you're going to take some fabric. If you're going to cover your yours with uh, fabric, what else would you use? Paper. Um, so, anyway, you're going to... Take your fabric 
I went ahead and cut it into strips um, to match the size of the journals. And all I'm going to do, and I'm not going to do the whole thing, is you see all of this? Um, and I'm also going to look. <laughs> okay, your little paints that you get at Walmart or Hobby Lobby. Um, I got this one. It was on sale. That. All of these different colors. You can come up with a galore of journal um, covered colors. And I've been mixing and playing with these, you guys, and having so much fun. And I see now I'm tending to blue because I'm thinking of a, a, fe a, pe a, fe -box, a peacock journal. The funny thing about that is I purchased um, last month some peacock fabric for those journals. But look, all the different colors you can create some things with. Just create your own colors. And burnt umber is very good. All of that. Very cheap to make what you're going to make. Okay. Now I pulled all of that out. Now I have to throw all of this stuff back. Okay, so I have these uh, paper cups and all I've done is created um, a little wash. So this color, because I was thinking of a nature journal when I came up with this um, color, I took these two, which is, where is the color? This is Thicket and this one is Italian Sage. And I think about half and half. If not, it was a little more of the Italian sage. But about half and half, um, I put a little bit of water. Now, these cups have the lining right there. So after I put a couple of squirts of each of these, and I I shouldn't have showed you. You don't need a lot. Just put a, a couple of squirts, maybe about to, you know, to cover your um little pinky. And then you add in water. Now, what I've been doing is after I add a little bit of water, I stir it around real good to get it mixed well. And then I go ahead and try and fill up to that little line that's on these paper um, cups. Now, after I'm done with this, the way I store the leftover, because you're going to have a lot left over. Do not judge me, you guys. Do not judge. This is the way I've been storing them. And used um water bottles and that'll keep for a little while i was putting them in the fridge but um i haven't had a problem with that yet if i left them out of the fridge so i just did another journal cover um and my little boy said this is black but i was trying to go for navy blue and um that didn't turn out right so i had to go again and it's not actually this dark so that's the color that I came up with. But this was that. And so I took um, some of that and just dumped some seam binding in seam binding in there to create this. That will go with the journal. That's going to be either a very dark, maybe a Poe journal, Edgar Allan Poe journal or a steampunk journal. But anyway, so after you have your wash, now we're going to have fun. And the first um, night that I did this, you guys, I stayed up very late. Um painting or dyeing my fabric and so that's all you do this is not the brush i have for that the brush that i um had with covered a lot better and i didn't have to take so long so then you're just going to do this your whole fabric you're going to cover it like that okay and that is very fun and relaxing it was for me anyway We're not going to do this. Um, we're not going to take the whole video of doing that. But I just wanted to give you a good idea of that. So once you're, you've done all of your fabric with that, do not throw this away. You can dye your lace with this. Um, you can dye 
your seam binding. You can dye sorry silk. You can dye, which I've also done, your cheesecloth with this. Guys, do not throw the leftover away because then you have easy, um, everything's matching or coordinating with your journal. So we're about to conclude this and no, that's not the one that I just did. So I want to show you some um, covers that I've already played around with. Um, there's that blue. And you saw some of the others that I already have. This is what um, I'm coming up with. And I haven't, I've probably touched like four, maybe not even four. Um, and when I used, did the pink, you can go as light as you want or dark as you want. But I just wanted to show you guys um, some of the colors. So the next video will move on into um, covering our journal. Stay tuned to the next video. Have a lovely night, evening, day, wherever you are.